Robert Munninger, and he's a data specialist at a nonprofit called Commit Dallas. And its mission is to empower and amplify those that are working uh, to improve education in Dallas. Let's give him a round of applause. Yay. Thank you, Marty. We go from partying to coding, life's saddest transition. I'm sorry for that. My talk is called The Code of Life. Um, I wanted to call it The Circle of Life, but that was taken by my nemesis, Elton John. So instead, I'm going to talk about how computers function and how similar that is to how humans function. It's actually kind of creepy uh, when you really dig into it. By the way, iRobot is a terrible movie. I want to save all of you two hours. Um, I don't have a degree in computer science. I don't have a degree in chemistry, so you don't have to trust me. But what I do have is this coat. And I think that pretty much gives me all the credibility that I need tonight. Um, when I talk about life, I'm talking specifically about DNA. Uh, and DNA is sort of our blueprint, our instructions. It's kind of like our operating system. So the first way that computers and humans are similar is the way they encode information. We can encode the same information in a lot of different ways. Uh, you can see here I've encoded five using a lot of different systems. Uh, computers do this using binary which has two symbols, zeros and ones. Uh, life does this using a quaternary system, uh, which has four symbols, T, A, G, and C, which are the four nucleotides that uh, make up the structure of DNA. And you can remember that by saying, Troy Aikman, go Cowboys, if you're a Cowboys fan. Um, what that really means is that you're not special. You're not a unique, beautiful snowflake. You're the same decaying organic matter as everybody else. In fact, we share 50% of our DNA with a banana, which makes me feel like a cannibal every time I drink a smoothie. <laughs> Speaking of eating people, um, if you've seen Jurassic Park, uh, this bald English gentleman tried to splice frog DNA into uh, an incomplete dinosaur genome and failed miserably. So don't ever try to do that, just in case you get the inclination. So what is our genome? It is essentially three billion of these letters long. Uh, we've now mapped it and we put it into these books, uh, which you can see here. Um, it's organized into 23 chromosomes. And our genome is those chromosomes and those are in the middle of the nucleus of every single cell in our body, which is kind of crazy. Um, along those 23 chromosomes, we have 20,000 genes. And those are the parts of us that make us unique. And now that we've mapped it, we know exactly where those genes start from letter to letter, um, which is kind of crazy. So the gene for eye color is on the 15th chromosome. Your gene for blood type is on your ninth chromosome. Uh, if you had a white Russian tonight and your lactose intolerance, that was a terrible idea. That's on your second chromosome. Um, so how does this actually work? So proteins go into the nucleus of um, your cells, and they read off parts of the instructions, and they bring them out to ribosomes, which translate uh, a string of those um, symbols and turn them into amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and enzymes which make us function. So every three of those symbols is mapped to a, an amino acid, which is kind of crazy because that's pretty much exactly how a computer works. A processor is sort of like um, a ribosome. It takes a string of binary digits and uh, reads those instructions and performs those instructions just like your cells do. So 0001 means add in a computer, um, just, like the nu just like the nucleotides uh, mean amino acids. Um, the history is relatively similar. similar. We reverse-engineered DNA to figure out what was the building blocks of life in 1943, which was the exact same year that the Harvard Mark computer was built, which is the very first computer. Now we can get our genome sequenced, our personal genome, which again is kind of creepy, but uh, you can see sort of what diseases you're susceptible to, whether your parents are actually your parents, that type of thing if you really want to know that. Um, we're now using DNA as digital storage. Um, we can hold 
all of Google and Facebook's data in one gram of DNA. That's how incredible our uh, DNA is structured. Um, that's my talk. The last thing I want to say is go Rangers. <laughs>